Hey everyone and welcome to a very special Digital Foundry Direct in that we're taking a look at the PC version of Call of Duty Modern Warfare, the, the beta that's been running over the weekend. And we're going to be looking at this one with two GPUs, with two players. And uh, joining me in this orgy of destruction, Alex <laughs> Battaglia. Hey Rich, I cannot wait to kill some noobs. How about you? <laughs> I am the noob. This is... <laughs> <laughs> this, this is a problem. I mean, I'm also playing with my, my little dinky mouse here, so we'll see how well I do. But um, Well, I'm using an Xbox controller. Oh, God, we're uh, going to get just, destroyed. <laughs> but yeah, as, which, which is half the fun. Yeah, yeah. We're both playing on uh, very, very, very similar uh, CPU setups here. Core i5, 8400, 16 gigs yeah. of RAM. And the main differentiator is the graphics card. I have an RTX 2060 Super. Yeah. And you are running on a, what is it? RDNA RX 5700, right? Yes, which is the equivalent to uh, the 2600. Yeah. Uh, sorry, the 2060 Super. Oh, I just got shot. That's good. Okay, good. <laughs> Try and find <laughs> I me. I don't know where you are. <laughs> Try and find and follow me if you can. Um, but <laughs> I, we are both running at 1440p right now here on the highest settings possible with no world motion blur. So to kind of keep this cre this feed really crisp for, for viewers because we've noticed 1080p videos that with motion blur on, as I found out doing the Borderlands 3 video, it kind of looks really icky on YouTube. So hopefully this is a bit right. clearer. Okay. No V-Sync mm -hmm. of course. And I am sailing here at like 80, 90 FPS uh, completely. Yeah, I'm in a similar uh, sort of uh, ballpark. Uh, sort of, I'm at 100 FPS at the moment, but that was a kill cam replay. <laughs> yeah. um, but what are we actually doing here? I need to know where you are so we can get some sort of um, idea of of performance. Yeah, right. Uh, I think. Well, like for like. I think this is the the match where the you kind of respawn back in in waves as we try and complete an objective. Uh, right. So. I'll be. You can. You're going to be spawning in at the truck very soon, I imagine. I I have spawned. Yeah, you're still alive, all right? Okay. Yeah. Are you still by the truck? Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm going to try and find you. What? Where the hell did you go? I'm I'm literally by the. Uh, uh, the spawn point. Oh wait! Oh, I just got wrecked. Um, but, you know, there's a lot kind of going on with this new Call of Duty engine, and you can see it immediately when you go into the game menus, just the, the availability of options like regarding tessellation, distance, and the way Filmic uh, SMAA applies, which I think when this game comes out and it's no longer in the beta form, we're going to have to kind of investigate that, because I've noticed some very, very interesting behavior with the way motion blur and depth of field works here with the TAA in this game. It, it has a very, very different resolve on edges that, you know, are missing anti-aliasing, I've noticed. And I've seen a lot right. of commentary on Twitter about it, about people not liking the way it looks, uh, calling it a little bit too soft, but I think there's more to it than just that. I think the game's, the way I've been playing it right now, at least at 1440p, is it's pretty sharp, I would say. Um, mm -hmm. uh, what is your frame rate about right now? Uh, uh, I'm at 100 frames per second. Yeah. Um, like, but, you know, the comparisons at the moment are kind of meaningless because I don't know where you are. Yeah, I have to um, find you. So, you know, we could be, we could be all over the place. <laughs> uh, but it's, it, you know, if this is, this is 1440p, uh, ultra settings, maxed. Uh, so we could probably go high. I mean, I suspect the campaign will be heavier. Yeah, I see, that's what I would suspect too. And But there's also, I would say, not a lot of options regarding some of the other things I would imagine, like world detail or draw distance settings. It all seems to be focused on a lot of the shading stuff that the game is doing, like tessellation or um, particle quality and things like that. There wasn't or even shadow quality, but nothing really about like the draw distance of items in the world, which would affect CPU performance. I'm wondering if that's actually not going to be very tweakable, because it's currently not in the menus, really. Um, oh, I found you. Oh my I'm gosh, right where are you? you? Oh my gosh, there Look, you are. There I am. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, well, I've got a couple of notes about that, which is uh, they've been promising massive geometry upgrades on the console. Yeah. Uh, side of things, which is likely through pretty aggressive culling. Yeah. And uh, maybe it's just the case that, I mean, you know, this is a, what, i5-8400. My CPU usage is about 50%. Mine's, uh, I think, on the NVIDIA driver here, DX12 game, by the way. This is the first, I think, DX12 Call of Duty game, if I recall. Um, 
and I'm sitting around 70 to 80 percent on each core of all six cores of this 8500. Oh, that's interesting because I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm definitely just at 50 odd, which is uh, interesting. I mean, I suspect we are GPU bound. Yeah, I'm, I'm completely GPU bound here, like 97 percent GPU utilization constantly. Uh, you know, ooh, even here, like 90, 80 uh, percent CPU utilization in this building. Here, I think, I think this game is just absolutely <laughs> maxing every part of the system that it can. It would be really cool to see in the final product uh, if the AMD and NVIDIA driver at similar GPU power have different uh, CPU utilization or whether or not there's a different CPU upper bound, which I would imagine happened. It wouldn't be the first time we would see that. There you are. Oh, there. Oh, yeah. yeah. So what's your CPU? Uh, let's let's look in. Oops, yeah, hold on, there's that's, people coming our direction. Yeah. Uh, so if we look towards this shattered wall here, what's my CPU is about 50, 45, 50 okay. percent. Okay, mine's 60, 70. So right. quite wow. a big 88 difference. 88 frames per second. 95 for me. for me. Right. Okay. So well, that's pretty impressive, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm basically possibly more GPU bounds than you are, so the GPU, CPU utilization isn't as high. Which is interesting because I actually kind of imagined this being a DX12 title, you know, coming in from insane optimization on consoles. It seems like they're pushing the consoles at the end of this generation here so much further than they have in the past. I was almost expecting this would be, I mean, we'll have to wait for the final game, but I was imagining this would be an AMD kind of clear winner title, where it's a lot mm. of the optimization is based around maximizing GCN performance on console, and that would carry over to, you know, AMD GPUs on PC. But just that little tiny look right there, I guess the 2060S is doing a little bit better GPU-wise. Same settings. Um, yeah, yeah, possibly, yeah. I mean, um, I'm at 90 frames per second at this area here. I'm standing right next to you. Uh, oh, there's people. <laughs> I'm not. Well, I'm not anymore. I'm dying right next to you. I, I do like uh, the kind of like a lot of the cool shader effects in this game. One thing I posted on Twitter earlier is that this is you know a multiplayer shooter, and when I made my motion blur video uh, last year, I commented that you know screen motion blur is not very good for most multiplayer games. It kind of gets in the way of you being able to see the screen in front of you and see what you're looking at. And this game interestingly allows you to just turn off motion blur for the world and keep it on your weapon. So when I spawn again, whenever that happens, you'll see that where the, the animation on the weapon is super kind of filmic, cinematic looking, really snappy with that motion blur, but the entire world itself stays crisp. And I think that's a really good option. I'm surprised more developers haven't done it in the past that make first-person shooters because, you know, I've, I've seen everyone always turns off motion blur in a game because it obscures their view. But if it's just on your weapon model, it makes it just look better and it's not like you're staring at your weapon model all the time or something like that. You're, you're looking in front of you. Um, where are you at there, Rich? I'm literally right behind you. Oh, there you go. I've been, yeah. Yeah, I've been following you like a <laughs> shadow. Um, <laughs> yeah, one thing that I noticed too is the they, they've been having this in Call of Duty games for a while now, but the, there's like, what, uh, how do you call it? Shadows on from the gun. Oh, there's a guy behind us. Let's kill him. Yeah, let's go up these stairs. Oh, he was staring at a wall. Maybe he's another uh, competitor chattel here. <laughs> you know. No, he's some, somebody's shooting me. Oh, gosh. He's probably down the stairs. Anyway, let's grab this. No, he was... <laughs> so I'm at 100 frames per second here? Yeah, 110, 100, you know, almost skirting around 120. I'm curious what we would get here if we turned up the uh, resolution scaling up to 4K. Do you want to try that out in this corner over here? Um, I would need to use the resolution scale yeah, yeah, to do yeah, that, yeah. Um, because I'm I'm set to 1440p display resolution. Yeah, let's give that a try. I'm gonna okay. let's stare at the back of this couch here and hide. Uh, okay. So let's yeah. Go By the way, this game kind of very rarely offers a real a red side a real uh, exclusive full screen mode, which allows you to change in game your oh gosh, you know this is very sensitive. Uh, change your refresh rate in game. Something that I complained about recently when playing uh, Gears of War 5 or Gears 5, which, you know, kind of follows that DX12 model of, okay, my, 
Now this is... <laughs> I've got an airstrike at my bottom there. I'm at like 35 frames per second and 45... Spawning there. in 48 to 50 about. Yeah, it's not good, is it? So let's let's go down to something a bit more agreeable. 1800p? So... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our, that's, that could work. That's so, our typical intermediary yeah. resolution, and the one that you find a lot on PS4 Pro titles, actually, as well, too. There we go. And you need Xbox One X. Oh, that's true. Um, the what is it? So this is pretty good. I'm I'm kind of in 60s to 70 territory. Yeah, here. 60, 66, 72, 75, stuff like that. That's pretty good, and I'm. So one thing I'm curious, this isn't uh, going to be an NVIDIA-sponsored title. You know, it's gonna it is, because it's got RTX. It's got RTX. So, um, will, will it feature mm. also other RTX features like variable rate shading? Because it does have variable rate shading on consoles, apparently, right? Mm. I'm curious. I hope so. I would hope it would, too. I, I mean, you know, that would be a software solution. It's not baked into, uh, into the older consoles at all. So, in theory, it should work here, right? Yeah, it should. Um, I mean, they yes. would just plug into the new... DX12 API uh, supports variable rate shading, actually. There's people shooting in the sky. What is going on here? Um, so that would be something that they could just easily plug into and uh, get going. But I'm, it's you know, no evidence of it at all in the menu. But then again, I was surprised that this was even Direct 3D12 at all. I mean, here we are playing a Call of Duty game, which have historically always been you know, Direct 3D11 ever since basically Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, or even Ghost before that uh, had a DX11 for its tessellation usage. Yeah, but one thing to remember is that um, this is the new Call of Duty engine, the latest refined version that's supposed to span into the next generation. Yeah, right. So oh. so the fact that it is DX12, I think, is obviously very welcome and also kind of possibly expected. <laughs> but regardless, here it is. And... Um, I'm, I'm quite happy with it. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I think it's looking great. I mean, it's doing a lot that other Call of Duty games have only kind of either done haphazardly or I would say in an incomplete measure. Like, Call of Duty Ghosts had tessellation on a lot of things, but it was kind of that, you know, <laughs> I would say overuse of tessellation that we saw in games around that time where it was an interesting API feature to take advantage of but was not artistically sound always. And here it's on a lot of the game world objects. Uh, like you can see it usually on like barriers and barricades and things like that uh, with like here right here things thing I'm looking at but it, you know at the same time it's not trashing performance <laughs> it's running so yeah well. I'm kind of in uh, 60 to 70 territory in gameplay but when you get the world view map when you get shot yeah right I'm, I'm down to like 35 yeah, or 45 something like that yeah I think it, the, the, it's one, uh, it's also, the, I think, the rendering of the entire level. I just spawned and started getting shot at. How is that supposed to be fun? Like, who, who <laughs> makes this? <laughs> um, okay, so when you, when you, I've noticed some interesting quirks. One, like we just talked about it earlier, Rich, before starting this video. When you get into the game itself for the first time, it's compiling all the shaders. And you will see your CPU going insane <laughs> as that happens. 100 on every CPU core. Uh, that, that was intense to see, but also, for some reason, when you spawn into the match for the first time as it's playing that little intro cinematic, I've also noted uh, extreme uh, GPU utilization. When I was playing the game earlier on an RTX 2080 Ti, I noted that it was 4K60 was perfect throughout the entire play, excluding those opening sections uh, when the, that little cinematic is playing as the game is starting, which I, I don't know why it was doing that necessarily, but that's one thing to notice. And obviously, I think the intense GPU utilization that you see when looking over the entire map as... I just keep dying when I spawn. I have... I, there's... I mean, I'm not paying attention, but... <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try and find you again with my FAMAS and... Uh, is there a um, is there a, a way for us to find it? Is that you? There? That's me. That's me. I found. You. Oh, there you go. See, look at that. Um, but uh, I that doesn't mean everything is, is perfect so far. I've noticed one curious little technical thing that I'm not sure if it's a, a visual bug. Yeah, here I'm just shooting the air. <laughs> um, there's one curious technical bug that I'll flash some images of right, right now on screen where cascaded shadows past a certain distance and I want to say almost like 15 meters in front of the character it doesn't look like they fall back to a lower resolution like they should rather to a, an extremely low resolution unfiltered shadow and it seems to be a bug that I've noticed at least on the RTX 2080 Ti 
Um, I don't think I'm seeing it now, actually, oddly enough, on the RTX 2060S. Are you seeing anything like that when on further no, shadows? No, 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 I'm not seeing anything at all. It looks perfectly fine. Yes. Because we were doing that earlier with uh, when we were doing our massive crossplay <laughs> yeah. testing, which may or may not be up now, but it was... Uh, it was quite funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, you were having issues there, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. Basically, where any shadow in the distance after a certain distance would just turn into this weirdly pixelated blocky mess. And it definitely does not look intended because usually cascaded shadows should gradually, you know, into the distance get worse and worse. But you shouldn't really notice it for mid-distance shadows. Uh, but that's mm. what I was seeing. But here, this looks actually rather perfect. I'm not obviously, you know, using my reflex sights and things like that. I have no idea how to play Call of Duty games. I realize. Um, but yeah, this is kind of the way it's looking right now, at least. Uh, very performant beta based upon these mid, newer mid-range GPUs. Obviously, you'd have to scale downward if you're looking at something like an RX 580 or GTX 1060. The precursors to these cards, and mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's yeah. about it. So the um, the mode everyone is talking about is, of course, the ground war. So should we quit out of this and give it a go? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Yeah, yeah. Tom just says it's absolute carnage. How many people are going to be on our team? 32? Uh, it, yes. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to play as... Uh, I mean, I'm assuming there's tanks everywhere in this mode, so I'll use something with an RPG. Tom says that you uh, last about 15 seconds before dying because there's just so many people in one area, which would actually be an improvement <laughs> on, on my long yeah. game. I mean, in comparison, 15 seconds would be way better than the last uh, game mode we were playing at. This is, you know, this is the opening cinematic that I said where the GPU utilization is way higher than normal gameplay for some reason. Uh, 50 FPS here, 51. What about you? I'm just on 60. Now I'm in gameplay. Okay, gameplay is 55 to. Ooh, put it down to 50 now. Now we're getting a big, big map. Yeah, here, wait, let's, uh, let's find each other and make sure that we're always next to each other here. Okay, so I'll just move forward. Uh, I see you down there. Uh, it's, your, okay. your name's Tag Green I'm since jump. we're in the same squad, presumably, or something. Okay, like that. well, that's useful. Okay, isn't I'm it? getting about 61, 62 FPS looking in this direction. Yeah, 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 same here. Oh, 67 yeah. now. Ooh, impressive. Okay. This looks like a map, actually, oddly enough, from the Crisis Wars game, if you've ever played that. Very much so. I, I haven't, but I suspect you have. I've played it a lot. <laughs> uh, this looks like uh, like the, the mill yard level, or whatever it's called. In fact, a lot of Crisis 1's levels look exactly like this. Um, but let's, yeah, let's continue forward. 70, 66 FPS, that's pretty good. And the shadow maps in the distance are still holding up. I mean, none, no sight of that weird bug I was seeing on the RTX 2080 Ti. So I wonder Just if that's... Just a moment here. So you're... At what? I'm at 50 frames per second. I'm at, what are you at? Uh, six, oh, well, now it's dropped down a little bit. 59, 60. Okay, so uh, I think um, the, the takeaway here is that NVIDIA seems to be stronger overall. Yeah. Oh, now it's dropping, um, though. There's a lot of alpha going on in that direction. My goodness. Um, yeah, well, I'm at four, I was in the 40s. Okay, there. I was at, like, 50 or so. Um, but this is... <laughs> yeah, this is... Still, this is pretty impressive. I mean, I, th I honestly kind of, you know. Well, you haven't even begun to look at the settings, you know, because we you always manage to claw back Ye masses yeah. of performance. I'm pretty sure that there's probably a lot of settings to claw back performance regarding shadows. In anything that's like a large open world scenario where there's shadow maps far into the distance, you can always turn down to around high going down from ultra and not see too big a difference. Uh, and reclaim a good amount of performance. In this game though, oddly enough, I'm not sure, I haven't done that yet, but one thing I notice is that the uh, the volumetric lighting is already kind of at a more blocky setting by default. Um, so I don't think, like in most recent titles we've been seeing where you can turn on volumetric quality to get back a bunch of performance, I don't think that's gonna be the case in this game. I think a lot of the base settings, even on, oh, I'm inside of a tank? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I obviously I'm, don't know I'm, what I'm doing. Perhaps not surprisingly, I'm dead. Oh, okay. uh, but I, I what's pretty good about this is that I can spawn on you. Ooh, uh, okay. This is very. Rude. This is basically a, 
I mean, a more extremely. Re- oh yeah, you can spawn on me and die on me too. That's uh, that's a great. Thing. That's just, just what I did. <laughs> this is sadly, disturbingly sort of uh, darkly erotic. This is uh, this is uh, this is weird. Uh, so there's shadow maps coming from over here from the large buildings, but this thing right here is not casting any. I wonder if that's just mapped uh, development oversight or possibly optimizations uh, to keep this. Uh, I, I love the. Word. I'm just kidding. Oh, this is not. This is. Not not the game for your uh, trademark bending over and looking at textures yeah, for that was on end. I mean, this is more just but bending over and getting shot. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, this, this this whenever the explosions occur close to camera, though, it is absolutely thrashing the frame rate. It like normal gameplay is around 50 to 60, um, but whenever high you know high density alpha comes near the screen, that's where it slows down. And one thing I'm curious, I mean. Councils are running a form of DRS, right? That's that's as as far as we yes. understand it. So, it's not an option though in the PC version yet. Uh, mm-hmm. I would really like to see that as another way to scale because, as I'm seeing it right now, a lot of the gameplay could easily be above 60 at a higher resolution. It's just those moments when there's too much going on that that area makes us uh, leave combat. When there's just too much going on that it it sees those drops. And, uh, that would be a perfect DRS candidate, or maybe even. But if you, well, yeah, I, I, I get that. But the other thing, of course, is a we haven't touched the settings yet, and b these cards are kind of like you know the new wave. This is the reason we chose them. Yeah, like yeah, the new right? wave of mainstream GPUs. Um, you know, they're a bit pricey for a mainstream GPU at the moment, but they won't be for that long. Yeah, and um, we're still getting eighteen hundred p in you know the high fifties and and higher in your case. Which on Mac settings, so you know this is this is pretty good. But I get your point that you know I would rather scale um, uh, the the quality of the resolution rather than the frame rate. Especially with uh, this kind of game's resolve, I'm spawning at the HQ so I can not die okay. immediately. Um, <laughs> yeah, because I'll just die Jesus. immediately. <laughs> um, <laughs> with this game's kind of resolve, a lo- I mean, people have been saying on Twitter and, you know, reading in forums that it is a bit soft, but... Uh, it well, it, it is. It's, it's, it's kind of like, um, this is the way games have been going for years, isn't it? And Call of, Call of Duty, particularly the Infinity Ward ones, have always championed this aesthetic, really, haven't they? Yeah, and I don't actually have a big problem with it, because I think... You know, moving jaggies is much more obvious than a slightly softer presentation. I've always kind of thought that uh, ever since TA was kind of invented, I kind of was won over rather quickly. Um, but one thing I do think people should uh, probably give a try out if they do find this game too blurry or too soft with its default SMAA set to filmic is, you know, try out any of the new sharpening filters, uh, both AMD and NVIDIA you know, if you have the right hardware, are supporting it in DX12 titles like this. So this is a great case to give it a try out, I think, uh, whether that's Radeon image sharpening or the, fid- what is it called? The uh, freestyle, freestyle sharpening. Uh, yeah, they all have- uh, <laughs> is, that, is that what it's called? I think, I think it's called yeah, freestyle, one. you know, it's like Tony Hawk's uh, freestyle sharpening. Uh, it's very 90s. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> if you think about it, the green power gaming logo that NVIDIA has has always been pretty 90s. I just kind of miss that, you know, awesome box art that we get. Now the boxes look rather boring. And, and the ironic thing is that AMD's DX11 driver is very 90s. <laughs> oh, Ooh, I went there. <laughs> I mean, well, we're going to have to cover that sometime again soon in the future, but, you know, it just pops up all the time when you don't want it to. Oh, this is, but this is DX12, so this is running very well. So this is running fine, yeah, so... Uh, I've noticed that the, a lot of the tessellation in the game is used only for select services, though, in areas where I'd, like here at the top of this thing, I would wish it was tessellated. Uh, you've seen, uh, you know, it's just kind of like really... And I'm getting shot to death as I stare at the top of the you were, You were punished for your analysis. <laughs> how dare yeah. you analyze this game? How dare you look at this bunch of rocks? Let's spawn on Saphir. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, like, like... This actually looks a bit serious sound like. Oh, we're getting shot at again. Yeah, there we go. Gun down. <laughs> In cold blood. Um, yeah. This does seem to be using a very similar um, global illumination system to previous Call of Duties. Based on what I've seen, this kind of probe method where 
You can see it like here inside the building when you look outside through a probe, but it's just that. It's not actually dynamic. The time of day does not change in game. It doesn't really need to, obviously, in a game level like this, although that would be pretty good looking. Um, but but I, th I think that every shadow is dynamic now. Yeah. I don't, uh, it certainly is in the campaign. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. The, 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 the direct shadows would be, but indirect shadows would not. That's what I, that's mainly what I mean. But they, they Alex, I'm really hoping that the quality of the chat is engaging people here, <laughs> because the quality of the gameplay is... <laughs> Us kind of walking somewhere, looking at a texture and getting shot Again, to death. Getting shot. <laughs> so um, the usual form. Oh, that's for an interesting PC thing. You can. Place. Oh, I can see the, how the coloring's working right here. If I get close to the wall, walk close to the wall and look down below you. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You can see the triangles cutting out. That's actually really cool. I've never actually seen that in game before. I mean, they. I, I don't know how intended that is, obviously, but you can see it breaking down into its constituent parts. Um, that doesn't look necessarily right, though. I wonder if it is a bug. Um, cool. So, yeah, maybe that's... The other thing, of course, is you get massive performance boosts when you... Oh, yeah, you do. Like, 100? Yeah. Yep. 90. Yeah, that's, that's kind of cool. Like, it looks like you're urinating against the wall. <laughs> <where, like. laughs> Serious business <laughs> at Death Row Foundry. Uh, that was... The, the, I really have to put it off to the team though here who are developing this game. The animations on the first person models are just awesome looking. I think this is the best feeling kind of weapons that we've seen in a Call of Duty game in a while. They just they just kick and bark and do all that really good stuff and flips out the magazine. That looks great. Um, but yeah, I hope this is engaging conversation. My goodness. Also, a cover system, that's that's pretty new feeling. Uh, when you get close to an object, it's telling me to use cover. That definitely is not right. But I'm, I'm actually curious what the RT will look like on a lot of these shadows. These are extremely crisp shadows, regardless of the distance they are from their caster. Like right. here, like that's, that's a tree that's like maybe 100 meters away, and still the shadow is extremely crisp. So that's one area where I think RT is going to really help the shadows here, making them much more diffuse and hopefully not a at a massive performance cost and based upon what i saw at gamescom they had 1440p g-sync monitors playing it obviously with an rtx 2080 ti but it was very much so above 60 fps at gamescom and that was in development code i'd imagine it's gonna be a pretty fast rt implementation uh, yeah 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 i saw them working on it at uh, the Infinity Ward's tech hub in Poland. Mm, yeah. it, they were used, They were developing on a 2070, Ooh. and it was super fast even on that. So uh, I suspect the RT will be, you know, absolutely fine. But to, you know, as you say, it is a shadows only implementation. Yeah, they do. The uh, they are using two forms of AO. Oddly enough, uh, normal Call of Duties before this one have used one called at least since most recently, GTAO, Ground Truth AO. I'm not gonna go, okay, I just died. Uh, <laughs> I, ju I was just gonna get on a vehicle there, I just got shot by a <laughs> tank, which, you know, it happens. Uh, I'm gonna spawn at the HQ again, because that means less death. But um, they've been using something does it, called- Does it mean more looking at walls? More looking at walls, so yeah, so like here, so you can see Ground Truth AO, like the normal AO they're using for mid, range distance and small objects, but it seems like this time, since the levels are bigger, they also added in a medium range ambient occlusion that you can turn on and off in the menu uh, separately. You can have them both on at the same time or one or the other, uh, which is kind of curious, and I'm pretty sure they, they added it in because these levels without extremely far distance AO would probably look a bit barren in video gamey. Um, uh, a big tank has suddenly landed right next to me. Oh, let's get inside. Yeah, so let's let's kick some bottom. I mean, 1800p, 75 FPS. This is pretty awesome for a mid. -range. Wow, that animation when he gets on the 50 caliber. That was, that was. So you're you're in the tank now. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, so, I'm on the top. Yeah. On the t so this is pretty good. Cause it, so if you face forward, we should have pretty much the same viewpoint. Yeah, I'm getting shot though. Is there any way I can uh, hide inside the tank? Because I'm just getting shot. Hold on, I just lost. Um, <laughs> we just lost our lives. <laughs> right, so I am in the... Oh, I don't know where I went. Right at the front of the map. And there's another tank here. I'm going to spawn on you. Right. Oh, you... Okay, yeah, there's another tank. I'm going to get in yeah. the tank. Behind. Okay. Are you... I am in. Ah, yeah. oh, okay, good. I can see you. Good stuff. 
So let's. No, there's that 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 the guy just killed me again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're gonna round the corner and die. Yep, we just lost. Ah, <laughs> oh, well. What do you say, Rich? Did, did it not occur to you to shoot him? No, I mean, I had a 50 caliber machine gun. I don't think it would do much to his his armored personnel carrier or whatever. Um, so do you want to try a different mode? Yeah, uh, we can uh, give done. off uh, one mode uh, last try here. One second. It's not quite the complete chaos Tom said it was, but, you know, it is, it's just very Battlefield-like in terms of the mayhem. Like a smaller battlefield level, that's kind of what it feels like. Oh, I love the loading in, by the way. I hope you see that too with the textures and the models going from their mm -hmm. ultra low detail versions to the much higher ones. Let's go back and try out, I guess, the last mode is the middle one, gunfight, right? It would be the two of okay, us yeah. against another two players, I presume, because I'm oh, pretty sure God. gunfight is 2v2. <laughs> so let's put on our A-game lead what out whatever people say these days i don't even know if people z, z game yeah <laughs> do, do it, people, relatively speaking do, yeah. do people even use leet anymore or is that something that was just mid 2000s early you know late 90s kind of thing um i don't know write that in comment below please <laughs> tell us if people still speak in lead or if they're just really old please please like and subscribe to, to this fascinating insight this is a uh, 80 FPS though, so these. Will, th I'm pretty sure this level is going to run amazing. I don't even have a weapon. Holy hell! I, yeah, you. I think um, we we have to locate weapons. Okay, so there's a pistol over here and them. a lever action yeah. shotgun on the ground or rifle. Primary weapon, fist. <laughs> a doom guy style. This is great. Uh, okay, oh, so I've got a carbine with a with a lever. Okay, yeah. I think this is the the stage where. You all get the same weapon. Okay, okay, so... So there's no excuses about being outmatched. I do like uh, the well. indirect lighting here. So, oh, so there's a guy behind me shooting me. So we're gonna die probably very quickly when playing this. Excuse us, please. <laughs> um, you can see a lot... One of the cool things I noticed that is the slow motion cam at the end looks extremely good, actually. Much better, I'd say, than previous Call of Duty games. Like, the animations hold up under kind of ultra high frame rate f scenarios. Oh, there's a Molotov here. Or what, what feels like a Molotov. So I've got this lever action shotgun again. Tell me if you're getting shot at. I am getting shot okay. uh, because I was okay, trying to so find that guy's out dead. Oh, you killed somebody. I, yeah, but it was more random chance, honestly. Can you replay that in slow motion to, so you know, <laughs> we can enjoy it? <laughs> It does look really good. I mean, there's there's one thing I've also noticed is the the general geometric detail of stuff on the ground, like these shells over here, these spent shell casings. That looks oh, there's a 50 caliber pistol here. That's that looks really good. Wow. I'm actually almost a little surprised that they did end up going for shadows, and um, well, just shadows actually for the ray tracing in this game. I mean, the modern art, you know, a lot of PBR materials, re reflections would have done really well too, but would have been probably much more expensive. Wow, that animation though for that that pistol shooting is. That is very... You're well into your hand animations, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> as I as I say that, I, I don't mean that as a. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I do have a hand fetish in games. So. Hand fetish. <laughs> Let's just look at the way that thing kicks. That looks great. I think it's one of these things where if you're not looking for it and it looks great, mm -hmm. you probably don't notice it. Yeah, I know, right? This is this, this is one of those games. I think people are, I mean, I hope people are praising the graphics because I've been very impressed with this beta so far, at least on PC. Um, but it does a lot of its graphics it's in such subtlety, uh, like like the motion blur, for example, like making sure it only applies to the gun. Like that's a very subtle thing that just makes the game look better that most people won't even probably notice, honestly. Uh, and I'm pretty sure we haven't seen much of the ca campaign at all yet, so that's probably where we're going to see this engine actually shining at its best. And I'm curious how the console performance will hold up there based upon this beta so far. I mean, you had a, a go at the the base consoles earlier, right there, Rich? And on the multiplayer, and also in Poland, I did I did actually uh, go hands on with a couple of multiplayer, uh, sorry, campaign missions. Oh wow! It was looking pretty good. Oh good. Uh, the levels I played were 
I won't say that they're corridor-like in nature. One of them was. It was like a uh, breaking into a, a house in London. Where you're going through, clearing the the you know the ground floor, the first floor. You know, oh, cool. so it's a pretty constrained area. The second one was more open, but still, you know, definitely a guided tour as such through through the level. But um, yeah, I mean, I think I think it's going to be impress impressive. Um, this is Infinity Ward and. They're obsessed with 60 Hertz yeah. more than any of the other Call of Duty studios, um, yeah. and they do take their time to get there. And uh, but they do get there when it comes to launch, so I don't really have that much of a an issue with um, with the performance uh, drops we're seeing here. I mean, on PC, it's already super. Yeah, this super is super great, running extremely well. I mean, you s will obviously look at the FCAP footage a bit later, but I haven't seen any great stutters or things like that. This is. For a multiplayer beta, this is extremely polished, and I do really love the options menu. I'm pretty sure when the game comes out and I cover it in its full, that's where I'm going to be spending most of my time, along with doing, you know, side-by-side -side comparisons like I always do. But really great options menu, great DX12 implementation, it looks like now, and uh, I'm definitely excited for the final product. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, should we wrap this one up then? Yeah, let's do that. We, yeah. could, we could shoot a few more, or rather get shot a few more times. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea where these things are. There's like, it keeps telling me to pick up weapons and items, and I just can't seem to. Okay, so we're about to die again. Yeah, okay, so yeah, let's end this right now <laughs> before we embarrass ourselves further. Yeah, I mean, uh, this has been a fantastic showcase, not just of Call of Duty's graphics, but also our incompetent boo booey <laughs> in terms of uh, That's video it. gaming. That's but, a um, part, boo -booey. <laughs> but anyway, um, Call of Duty. Modern Warfare, the reboot. This is it on PC. We've had uh, some fun playing it and looking at textures and whatnot, <laughs> and desolation, and getting killed a lot. And um, yeah, we're going to be doing a lot more on it. We've got console analysis coming. We've got a massive cross-play uh, deep dive, which we recorded just before this, mm. uh, which is which is which most likely totally infuriated the other squad members. <laughs> You'll see why in that because point. it was. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we were just killing ourselves simply to get matching footage uh, via spectator gap, which was brilliant. And uh, it was just the way they were leaving in disgust. Yeah, they were leaving our team <laughs> I, I, in disgust. I turned off the mic for that gameplay, but I saw it keeping <laughs> popping up. I'm presuming it was just full of expletives. I, d I did not record that. Game. But yeah. <laughs> Good time. Oh dear, oh dear. Okay, well, let's wrap this one up then. Uh, please do like and subscribe if you enjoyed this nonsense, and ring the bell for instant notifications whenever a new Digital Foundry video arrives on the channel. You can follow us on Twitter. But, well, that's all from us for now. See you in the next one. Bye bye. <laughs>